Hey, Kim. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? Good, how are you? Good, good. Sorry, this is uh, the hundred tabs that I have open. <laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome. We have tons of people in the waiting room. We're letting them all in. Come on in, come on in. All right. We have some people joining, joining, joining. The doorbell continues to go on. We'll give it just another two seconds here. Hello, Heather, Barbara, Tracy. Just turn this off as well. So you don't see my bouncing bubbles. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, thank you all so much for being here. We have decided, uh, so this summer, we are actually offering even more content, even more webinars for you. So this is super exciting. So every week for the rest of the summer, we are gonna be having Webinar Wednesday, yay! Um, everything, we're gonna have some, some old stuff, we're gonna have some new stuff, um, but please don't forget to reach out to us um, through either or, um, through either LinkedIn or through any of our email channels or anything else. Let us know if there's a specific topic that you want us to cover. Um, we're happy to be very flexible as well. So if we need to rearrange a couple of things, we're more than happy to do it. Next week, we're going to be hosting nine fatal sales errors market leaders don't make. That is by far our most popular session that we ever do. Um, so if you ever want an opportunity to, if you haven't had an opportunity, or maybe it's been a while since you've seen that one, please attend that one because chances are there's at least one, two, three different things in there that you can definitely do to improve yourself. And the moment you find out that, oh, these are the mistakes that I'm already making, you can go ahead and make that improvement for yourself right away. Today, we are going to be covering the 12 big impact changes to your sales process that's going to have immediate effects. Why is this one so important? So number one, um, for those of you that have been following us for a little while, uh, we have, we've made some massive changes to, to our standard program, KO Sales U. It is now 12 weeks of content. Yay. How exciting is that? So it's going to be 12 weeks of content. So what I want, what we wanted to do with this one today is really, if you are unable to attend one of our formal classrooms or you're attending, but you're not going to be starting until maybe the end of August when our next classroom is, let's get you the 12 things that you can do immediately. If I broke down every single 90 minutes session into one or two slides what is the concise thing that you will learn from those things how exciting is that um, so I'm your host today. My name is Kim Orleski. Um, that is actually me on the left in case uh, you're, you're a little bit confused. Um, I am LinkedIn's most, uh, most influential sales leader to follow. I am Success Magazine's most inspirational blogger. Um, that is my third book, Sell More Faster. You can go ahead and uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to, um, to actually uh, download that um, as well. You'll get a free, the free opportunity for that book at the end of today's webinar. I am also Startup Canada's Female Entrepreneur of the Year. Um, uh, before I became all of that though, I actually worked in sales, um, sales for almost a decade. I, I worked for a lot of different companies, everything from Xerox to American Express. Um, Clarion was actually, is actually a medical device company. So I had my dabble in medical devices. I chased the money, which for some of us, uh, maybe we've done that and we're like, oh, that was actually probably not the right thing to do. Um, that was definitely my experience with chasing money. Um, and then I also worked for PureLater. PureLater is the Canadian version of UPS and FedEx, um, very similar type of thing. 
but I want to talk to you about creating new clients because when I, when I started in my business, right? I mean, number one, I, I had a listed territory, but some of the contacts that were in my listed territory actually hadn't even had any contacts in some of them years, some of them ever. How do you reach out to somebody for the very first time? How do you create a relationship with somebody that has, doesn't even know that you exist? This. For many of you that are starting your own business and getting started, you know exactly what that fear is like. How do you even get started? I then went ahead and um, worked for a couple different companies. Uh, one of them was that I had a brand new territory, but I had to build my own relationships and my own conversations. These were, these were relationships that literally somebody said, here is a company that I want you to contact. Nobody has ever had contact with them. Go and start something brand new. Now in the you might think that that is a fortunate thing or an, um, uh, an inf unfortunate thing. It is entirely up to you. But this is really about, you know, understanding how do you get that started? Now, in some, sometimes in some of these accounts, there was multiple people in the same accounts. And now I had to create brand new conversations, despite the fact that maybe I had a conversation with that bank or that university or that business, I had to meet you know, like six, seven, 10 people inside that same account. All of this was a lot of anxiety, a lot of nervousness, a lot of fear. Where do I get started when I don't even have something to start with? I, I wasn't quite clear sometimes on the product that I was selling. I knew that I had a Purolator business card, but I wasn't really clear on what shipping looked like. How do you price it? What, like, what's the difference between one shipping company versus the other? I didn't know, but I still had to get out there. I, I tell you this because I want you to, I want to know that I empathize with you. I know what it it's like to be in a situation where you're not sure who or what you are selling, who you are selling to, how do you get started? So from there, I actually, I ended up becoming really good. I ended up learning sales. Sales is a process. And that was one of the things that I embraced. I learned from all of those different companies. I embrace the idea that as long as you follow the process, you are going to get the result that you need. So I started KO Advantage Group. I started it for a couple reasons. Number one, I saw way too many business owners, way too many entrepreneurs that saw their businesses suffer, struggle, even have to close. 50% of small businesses will close within the first five years. And it is not because the person isn't passionate or isn't excited about what they have to offer. It's because they don't know how to convert that passion into a conversation that ultimately gets the person to take action, ultimately gets that client to say, I need to invest in you. We're going to be talking about how we can ultimately make that happen. So what we, what it ended up doing was it never when it created relief. Oh, <sighs> Imagine knowing what you're going to be able to close before the month is done. Imagine here we are, July 8th, and knowing what you are going to close in the month of July, in the month of August. How many people would actually have a way better summer if they knew how much revenue was going to be coming into their business. Even in the chat, I want you to put in the chat, be like, yes, like that is what I want. The other thing I wanted to create for, for a lot of business owners was empowerment. Like when you start your own business and you now know that you're no longer having to chase chase the clients, chase the person because at least they have a pulse and a credit card. That is my ideal client. No, we don't want any more of that. We only want premium clients. We only want clients who are going to work with us, that are going to pay us, that are going to pay us an above amount than all other people. We don't want clients that are going to be going ahead and, and just saying, well, will you do it for less? What am I really getting? Hmm, what am I really getting for that amount? We don't want clients like that. So we give you the empowerment and how to communicate in a way so that you never have to deal with that question again. Okay? We are dedicated to entrepreneurs and small mid-sized businesses, specifically those that are in consulting types of roles. If you are selling something invisible for a premium price, we will give you the process and show you how to get that done every single 
time. The other thing we do is we're going to give you better process for cash flow predictability, bigger sales, faster closes, whether you are trying to sell in through an online method. And I don't mean online like e-commerce, but rather using communications like zoom, like more of the online web tools that are available out there. Or if you're wanting to sell in person or maybe a hybrid of the two as economies, as cities start to open up and in-person meetings become much more common. At the end of this though, what I do want you to take away is that education will never be the same as application. Education does not equal application. So you are going to learn a lot. I hope you have your notebook available to yourself. Take a ton of notes. But at the end of this, I want you to walk away with one thing at least one thing on what is the action that you are going to take and start applying it. The ocean was created one drop at a time and doing one small thing every single day will lead to greater success than choosing to just be really well educated and choosing to do nothing. Do something, get that meeting, connect with somebody, reach out, send an email, send a phone call, whatever it is. We're going to give you lots of tips on how to do that. I hope that sounds really exciting. If you are excited and as excited as I am, I want you to put in the chat right now, like, yes, I am super excited. Yes, I'm going to be ready to take action. Yes, I can't wait to learn something new and I want to start applying it. I have my calendar open this afternoon. I am going to take what I'm going to learn and start applying it. Thank you to those of you that are already in the chat. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I am so excited for all of you. Absolutely. Mia, yes, let's make this happen. So one of the things that really differentiates us from all other sales programs that are out there is the simplicity of what we've created in our sales cycle. But Kim, I'm a consultant. I run into really complex sales. My, program, my, my solutions don't actually fit into a perfect box. Well, that is great. And as Einstein said, the, the exchange of showing how smart somebody is, is can they communicate something as simple as possible and no simpler? I've seen programs that are 12 steps, 10 steps. Like, are you, we are talking about AA here? Like, we're no, we're talking about sales. We talk about six steps, six steps, because I want you to focus on the conversation you are in with your client and not what do I need to do in every single conversation. The other thing we focus on is the, the, where the sales cycle and the buyer's journey align, because this is a relationship. And unlike any other type of relationship where if you were in for marriage counselor and the marriage counselor said, I don't really care about your spouse. I only want to talk about you and what you're doing. That would be a terrible counselor. If we are in any type of relationship, there's usually two parties. And in the sales conversation, there is the seller and there is the buyer. And I do not want to talk arbitrarily just about you as the seller, you as the business owner. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Because if I talk to you about what you need to do, that is called training you in manipulation and coercion. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be excellent at manipulation and coercion. I don't want anyone to feel like they were coerced into buying a product or service from me. What I do want to do is I want people to leave feeling greater than. I want them to leave feeling like, oh, Kim understands me. Kim gets my business. I feel so much more natural, so much more authentic than I ever have before. That is what I ultimately want in my business. So what we talk about is where is your buyer and what do you do at that point that the buyer is in that position? When you know where your buyer is, there are certain things that we will ask them, certain conversations that we will have that will help them to move to the next step, as opposed to this is what you do when you're trying to do it. Okay. So the 12 steps, let's talk about step number one, right? If you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. Anything that you want in your life has to be something that you can measure, something that you can approve upon. And the only way that we know that we can approve upon it is because we have a baseline. We have a certain metric that we know this is where I am. This is where I want to be. 
and then we can go ahead and create the steps to get there. There are certain sales conversations, certain webinars that I've, I've attended just as a participant, and the person's like, well, you can just will it will it to happen, right? Imagine use more, um, attraction to have your clients come to you. And I'm like, sister, you have no idea. You have no idea what you're talking about. You can't just create a goal and think, that's my goal. That's how it's going to happen. No, you start by creating the goal and then you reverse engineer to figure out how you're going to get that goal. For most business owners, most entrepreneurs, the thing that we're going to measure is a quantifiable type of, uh, of metric that's going to be revenue, right? How do you know you've achieved more? My clients, and it's not about just understanding, right, that I want to make more money. This is about going ahead and saying, I want to make this amount of money. I want to make X dollars. I want to make a hundred thousand. I want to make 250,000. I want to make a million. I want to make $5 million this year. Whatever that crazy number is for you, take that financial goal. Number two, you are then going to take the average price point or really your leading product or service offering. Let's make this simple. I don't want you to overcomplicate this. You might sell 20 different products and services. I don't really care. Take the one that is the most common that people will typically buy. Take the one that's kind of like the average price point for you. Start simple. Start with the thing that is most common and then divide that. Your financial goal divided by your average dollar means that that is the number of clients that you need to get to your achieve, achieve your goal. For some of you, this is going to look like, okay, that's actually really doable, right? Do this by a month or by an annual number, even a weekly number, if you will. I, I always encourage going with smaller time frames than bigger time frames. Uh, but I mean, this will at least give you a starting point. And then, and then from there, you'll be like, yes, this is definitely achievable. Or be like, your eyes are going to bug out and you're going to be, I, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this is something that can happen. So what we'll do though, is no matter what, I want you to then really start measuring your activities and seeing what is not connecting. If you need one client, right? This is kind of a guideline, a sales 101 kind of thing. But if you need one client, you should probably have no more than two proposals that go out for every one of those clients, right? I, I do not want the, the opportunities on whether you are going to choose to get a client or not to be less than a coin flip. If you are sending out so many proposals that the opportunities on whether a client says yes or no, you're sending out three proposals, four proposals, 10 proposals before a client eventually says yes, your chances of ever closing that is actually less than a coin flip. Like that's terrible. So never ever have your proposals to be more than the chances of a coin flip. The other thing I want to see is do you get about four meetings for every client? If that number is more, that tells me that something is not connecting. If you have more than 10 prospects before a meeting, that tells me that something's not connecting. Do you have 10 prospects for every client? Do you have four meetings for every client? Do you have two proposals for every client? You can find this out by even just looking at your calendar for the month of June. Take a look at your calendar for the month of June. Use different color highlighters and be like, that was a proposal meeting. That was a client first introduction meeting a second meeting or a third meeting, but it was a meeting. It was in the calendar. It exists. And here is the number of people I ultimately contacted, email, phone call, LinkedIn messages, whatever it is. Where are your numbers for that month? And if they are off in this area, we need to get you a better process. If you are having way more than 10 prospects for every client, or you're trying to contact 10, uh, more than 10 people for every client, if you're having way more than four meetings for every person that's going to eventually become a client, let's get you a better process. Because what that tells me is your funnel has crazy little holes all the way through. Your message is not resonating. Your conversations are not connecting. Because sales stop. This, you'll stop the sales cycle stallers by focusing on the fastest way to the dollar. Focus on how to get to that dollar as fast as possible. And all of the exhaustion that, oh, I feel so tired all the time. I'm working and I'm working. That, that feeling of being in the hamster wheel where you're running and running and you're running and you never know when you're supposed to be able to jump off, we're gonna stop that. Because we're gonna be able to say, okay, 
here's where the dollar is. What has to happen just before that? How do we make that more effective? What has to happen just before that? How do we make that more effective? And what happens before that? And how do we make that even more effective? Okay, number two, catch only lobster with lobster traps. So I put a picture up here. This is a lobster trap. If you've ever been to the East Coast and you've watched them fish for lobster, they take these little traps and they drop these at the bottom of the ocean. And they will collect 10, 20, 30 of them. Every single one will have a lobster, maybe two if they're lucky. Maybe some of them won't have a lobster. But the likeliness of them connect, collecting enough lobsters for the lobster traps is very high. What we don't see with people who try to fish for lobsters is we don't see them trying to throw out a giant ocean net, hoping that they're going to get lobster, but really being okay with whatever they get. You would never see someone who is trying to fish for lobster, which is considered to be the premium of all seafood. If you go to a restaurant and they say, hey, it is surf and turf month at, at the keg, get your steak and get the lobster tail. And I go ahead and I order the lobster tail. The table next to me is whispering They're like, oh, Kim ordered the lobster tail. She must be doing really good. She must be making so much money. We only want lobster as clients. We want the very best. We want the premium. So if you only want the very best, if you only want the premium, why are you fishing with anything but a lobster net? Why are you fishing with a giant ocean net that's trying to cover everything? I do digital marketing for all sorts of different companies right across the side. This is not what we're trying to do. We are trying to create much smaller experiences, get really clear on what this is. You need to be clear on who your ideal buyer is and understand who, what does your ideal client look like? If you want lobster, what does that lobster look like? What do they want? What do they need? What are their goals and aspirations? What are they afraid of? What is bothering them? Where do they find their information and narrow everything else and focus only on that? If you follow us on Facebook, what you'll probably notice is that our Facebook en engagement has significantly gone down. Why? Because our lobsters are not on Facebook. Our lobsters are on LinkedIn. Our lobsters are only searching for very limited information in very limited places. And that is where we are going to zoom in and find them. And when we resonate with a message, when I tell you who our ideal client is, who our niche is, niche is you're going to say, absolutely, that is me. Or you're going to be like, absolutely, that is not me. And that is exactly what I want. Because eventually I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create an opener. I'm going to reach out to these clients. I'm going to reach out to these ideal prospects. And I'm going to say, are you interested in learning more? This is specifically what we do for these specific businesses. Are you interested in learning more? Now, a lot of companies, a lot of, um, you'll go to like any type of meetup and everything, and they'll talk about like networking that works and, you know, and how to create an amazing elevator pitch and blah, blah, blah. And they try, what they try to do is they actually try to do this in the wrong way. They try to create this as a catch all. I'm going to give you such an amazing opener that you're going to be interested. Are you interested in getting more clients for less money? Are you interested in paying even less in your services? Are you interested? in saving time all of those things of course who is going to say i don't want to save any more time i don't want to save any more money everyone's going to say that does that help you to narrow your focus it does not it does not help you to narrow your focus and what you're ultimately going to do is by creating a really big catch-all, you now have to filter out even more of the crap you have to filter out the things that don't fit so your opener is going to connect with a very specific business specifically. And we want to do this in a way that actually creates a, a very small pipe, a very small tube that then says, if you are this type of person, then I will catch you down here. I am going to create a little door and then I will catch you down here versus saying, let's try to catch everyone. And then we will go ahead and dismiss the people that don't quite work this. We want people to start filtering themselves out before they ever take a moment of our time, before they ever book a meeting. And if you are looking at your calendar and you're saying, Kim, I had so many meetings and it was a coffee meeting and it was an introduction and it was this, 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 then I challenge you 
were you meeting with the right people or were you trying to catch everybody and not creating an engaging piece, an engaging statement, something that is going to rhyme, a question, something Twitter like 140 characters, 280 characters that is ultimately going to do that. We did a um, last last week, actually, we did our, our webinar was on creating an opener that sticks. If you miss that one, you can actually catch the replay on our website, on our blog page. And then you're going to reach out for people. Perfect your email and your direct messages. Too many direct messages and emails are way too long. I, I showed you that buyer cycle. I showed you that entire thing. And I said, you know, like we understand where we are based on where our buyers is. Okay. Let's be honest here. How many people, right? Either just like, you know, in the chat say, I hate that. Or yes, I love those. When you get a direct message on LinkedIn and you have to scroll and scroll and scroll before you get to the top of the message, are you like, I am so excited to read this. I can't wait to like read this entire four paragraph message with a bunch of links and some type of document. I don't know about you, but I hate that. And if I have to scroll more than once on a message that is not expected from somebody, I'm not even reading it. You have already wasted my time by including a scroll. So we want you to get way more concise, way better with your emails and your direct messages. Connect with your prospects where they want to be met. Some of them are going to like to be connected on LinkedIn. Some of them are going to like to be connected with directly be, uh, via t um, sorry, email. Some of them actually will prefer even text messaging. You're going to try different things. We don't know until we try. But no matter what, your introductory message, your first message out to somebody should be no more than three to five sentences. Sentences. That is it. Oh, it feels so small. And it should be small. Get to the point. Your email should have lots of white space. And real, like, if you want to talk about what those four sentences will be, it's a hook. It is identifying the problem, solving that problem, and a call to action. If you don't have a cook, then it is identifying the problem, solving the problem, call to action. If it is five sentences, it is a hook, it is a compliment, it is identifying the problem, solving the problem, a call to action. That is it. That is it. Simple, simple, simple. Now, it might sound really simple. I promise you this is going to take a long time to get there. Try it practice it. And if you want, if you're starting out and you're just getting started every second Monday, we do sales, um, sales, role play, sales meetups, try writing out your message. And then instead of going ahead and trying either a phone call or something, be like, listen, I have a sales email. I'd like to practice out with the, everybody. I'd like to get your feedback on what this is. Those are free for everyone to attend. Try it out, get feedback from people, use the tribe and the support network that you have. For those of you that are on, because I know we have a few graduates that are on, we have a few students that are currently on, you also have access to an every other second week to specifically to our graduates and to our students as well. So you can do this every single week. You have coaching sessions available to you. But what is that right call to action? It actually entirely determines on where you are in the sales process. If the person is not expecting your, your email or your phone call, this is a purely I am wanting to reach out to you. What you will then ask for is, are you interested? Are you interested in learning more? Can, would you like to learn more about this, right? Uh, would you like to see, um, you know, some more information? It is just really, are you interested? The amount of people that will say yes for something that is n something completely un um, not expected, there's actually a huge, a huge response rate, almost double if you are just interested, if it is a very first contact and they are not expecting your email. However, that completely changes. It completely changes if you are now involved in a sales cycle. If the person does know, um, does know you, right? You have already, they say, yes, I am interested. Then you want to turn this into entirely a specific 
call to action. Are you available Tuesday at 2 p.m.? Are you available Tuesday at 3 p.m.? You almost get a double in the turn, return of response. Use the right call to action for the right moment in time for your sales cycle. Okay, number five. Yes, yes, you have to call. Yes, you have to call, but I don't want you to call just anyone. I want you to be proactive in your sales cycle. Remember how I promised you at the very beginning of the presentation that we're going to help you get more cash flow predictability, get more cycles, sales cycles going on, have faster closes. This means that on top of just waiting for things to happen, we are also going to be very proactive. But I am not asking you to open the yellow pages and start going down a list. I am asking you to spend enough time researching, enough time understanding who your clients are, getting to know them, and then going ahead and connecting with them. You are going to create a list of 100. <laughs> We go through one presentation called The Fastest Way to Grow Your Business. That will be actually um, in the next month, we'll be doing that one. We'll talk about how do you actually find that list of 100? How do you, how do you hand select those clients? The idea behind this is that you will get on the phone with them. You are, you're gonna send them an email request. You are gonna ask them if they're interested, whether they are or whether they aren't, we're also going to call them. We are laser focused, eyes on the prize. We are not going to wait for somebody to say, yes, I'm interested. We are going to let them know, I would be honored if you would choose to do business with us. I would absolutely love if we could be in a relationship, if we can be in a partnership. I know I can help your business. And if the client says no, then we move on. But if they do, you're gonna be beside yourself. <gasps> Oh my goodness, this is amazing. I can't believe I had it. And I will promise you, I will promise, promise, promise you. Every single student that graduates our program has had an opportunity where someone that they have called completely out of the blue does do business with them. Many cases, these students are actually having that client convert into a brand new sale before they are graduated from the program which is how cool is that considering our program is only three months long. But if a relationship has to start somewhere, why not the phone? Because the ultimate goal, the only way that we are going to move a sales cycle forward is by get the meeting, get the meeting, get the meeting. That is the only thing that I want you to measure. In absence of revenue, revenue is the goal. Yes, absolutely. But the one thing that you as a business owner have control of is how many meetings can you get? Get the meeting, get the meeting, get the meeting. Focus on that. Number six, once you have the meeting, once you start meeting with people, if you look in your calendar, you already have meetings. I want you to start making sure you're qualifying those meetings in that meeting. I want you to either get them to a fast no or a go. You have even determined that yes, this is a perfect fit for me or absolutely not. I am not going to spend more time with more time wasters because unfortunately the reality is, is that there are a lot of time wasters out there. They might have filtered themselves out in that sales funnel, but maybe we're still working through that. Maybe we're still not quite at that point where we're ready to filter people out. So at the very minimum, in that very first meeting, we are going to start asking the right questions to get people to be at a fast no or at a go. And this is entirely about, you know, getting them to understand, you know, we have to understand what are they looking to invest? What are their current financial goals? How much have they already spent on trying to solve this problem? The authority, right? Who else is going to be involved in this conversation? Maybe you're just dealing with small business owners and that's going to be an easy one. Maybe you're dealing with mid-sized companies and there might be a lot of different conversations that are going to happen. Why, where do they need this to be, right? Where do they need to be? What are their goals? What are their ambitions? How do we help them get to that ideal state? And then the timeline. When do they want to see the results? Not when do they want to start, getting people started on something is terrible. When do they want to see the results? Because that is the focus on how we help people to go. Asking better questions is going to be critical to the entire sales 
process. If you are not asking people questions, then you are setting yourself up to fail. Nobody wants to hear how amazing you are so that you've just given them a bunch of information. They're like, mm hmm. Uh-huh. I understand how you're, you're going to do that. I understand who you've worked with. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I like you, but I'm not getting it. That doesn't help the conversation. We need to ask better questions. The person who asks the questions owns the conversation. You are in ownership of your own cash flow, your own sales cycles, your own clients. You should be the one to ask the questions. Open-ended questions are typically better questions to ask, and they're harder questions to understand and to, uh, to be able to articulate. Those are your questions that are your who, what, where, when, how, or why, right? Your eighth grade English class type of questions. I need you to write me an essay, and you have to tell me who, what, where, when, how, or why. We need to ask our clients more of those questions. Because when we ask our clients on who, what, where, when, how, or why question, they will have to force themselves to respond with a statement. Are you the decision maker? Yes, is a lot different than who else is going to be involved in this conversation. Oh, Betty, Peter, uh, Blake, you know, and then we're coming up with the questions. Um, you know, are you, are you ready to make a decision before the end of the summer? Yeah, is a lot different then why is making this decision before the end of the summer so important to you? Oh, well, we're going to be running into our busy season and that's going to impact us in this way. We want to gather a lot of information questions. Now, closing the questions are not bad. They should just be used more strategically. And unfortunately, people haven't discerned between the difference between when is an open-ended question the best question to ask and when is a close-ended question the best question to ask. We practice with you and to tend the role plays and you're gonna get really well, uh, well practiced in this. Number seven, questions, questions, questions. Continue to ask those better questions and prepare those better questions um, in advance. If you only take away one thing from this presentation, if the one thing you're going to walk away with is like, it's going to be anything, I want it to be this one thing, is that the only thing that you're going to walk away with is that you are going to attend every single meeting by number one, asking yourself, what are the questions that I need to ask that client in this meeting? And start writing them down. Spend three minutes before every single meeting and ask yourself, what are the questions that I need to make sure I ask that client in this meeting? If you do that one thing, you are going to dramatically see an improvement in the quality of your meetings. You are going to dramatically see your sales cycles happen a lot faster. And when you get to proposal, you are going to feel so much more confident that the client is ready to buy from you than you ever have been before. And that confidence is going to help you to close more. It is going to help you to close faster and it is going to help you to close for more money. And who doesn't want that? Can I get an amen here? The way you're going to ask your questions are going to be entirely determined between whether you want to get to a destination versus the transportation. Too many business owners will go ahead and talk entirely about their product or service. This is what we do. This is what we do. This is what we do, right? This is how we get you there. This is what we do. This is how long it's going to take you. Imagine being on a flight and the airline only talked to you about how they are going to fly you somewhere. And they never talk to you about where you're going to be when you get off that flight. Imagine trying to buy a vacation package and the, the airline said, listen, we're WestJet Airlines. We are so amazing because we run Boeing 737s. We can fit 222 uh, seats in our side of our planes. We fly at approximately, uh, depending on your destination, anywhere between four to six and a half hours at 30,000 feet in the air. We are going to have the absolute best flight attendants that are going to sell you overpriced drinks. And you would think to yourself, you're like, okay but I, I don't get it. Like, I'm not really sure. So, so what, what am I paying for again? Well, you're paying for this flight. Well, yeah, you're paying for the flight, but it's not about the flight. It's about where that flight gets you to. What happens the moment you get off that plane? What is the next two steps, three steps, 
four steps after that. When an airline tries to sell you a flight, they focus you on two places. They focus you on why it sucks to be where you are. You are bored. You've seen too much of your city. You are, you've been under social isolation for so long that you need a change of environment. Are you be, like so beyond exhausted of these four walls? And you're like, yes, yes, I need to be anywhere else. I'm like, fantastic. Let us get you to the beaches of Cancun because there is going to be white sand and ocean breeze and as all you can drink margaritas from the all-inclusive resort that you were staying you're like yes yes that is exactly where i want to be that is what they focus you on they don't tell you why you buy that seat on that plane it is not about the seat on a plane number eight using emotional intelligence for even better questions and faster sales cycles so before I started my own company, I worked for 10 years. All of those different logos that you saw at the very beginning, that was 10 years of sales experience. 10 years of sales experience. And the one thing that none of those companies ever covered in whenever we did any type of sales training was the role emotional intelligence took inside the sales cycle. They didn't care. They said the reasons why our clients buy is because we're faster, cheaper, better. But that actually wasn't the reason why clients bought. They bought because there was something deeper inside them. There was something that said, if I invest in this, this is going to help me in bigger ways. This is going to allow me to achieve more. It's going to allow me to get better clients. It's going to allow me to get more revenue. It is going to help me have a greater social impact. It is going to allow me to finally pay for my ch children's college education. Whatever it is, there was something that was so bigger than all of this. And even in business to business sales, even in consulting, even in marketing, even in engineering, if we don't understand the why, why is that company what they are? Why are they trying to achieve more? Then it doesn't matter what we're selling because that's how sales cycles start to stall. stall. Is because the client doesn't understand that this purchase is going to help me be the company that I ultimately want to be. At a very basic level, People will ask very look and think questions. What would you like it to look like? What do you think it should be? How would you like it to be? As we get better at this, we will start to invite more feeling questions. How do you feel about this? How are you feeling today? How are you feeling about the conversations that we've already had? And at the very highest level, we get into being. What kind of company would you become? What kind of leader do you want to be? What do you want people to say about you and your legacy when it is your time to leave this earth? That gets really deep, really fast, and it is so incredibly impactful the entire way. It will create better relationships. It will allow you to be your authentic self. And that is what most people really want to be. They don't want to learn sales so that they feel like they're being anything other than the most authentic version of themselves. The irony, we're going to teach you how to become more natural, more you, and get you to the results that you need. Because anytime you build empathy, empathy should be the number one thing you build with people before everything else. There's a lot of sales training conversations out there and they'll always talk about the value of rapport. Rapport is amazing. Look for a picture of a boat so that you can look at the picture of the boat and you'd be like, oh, you like boats? I like boats too. Look at us. We're a couple of boat lovers. Don't we have so much in common? Ha 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 ha. You should buy from me now. That is not the case. What we need to do is actually connect, connect with the person, find out what are they feeling, stand in their shoes for a moment and ask them, is like, why is that your goal? Is that where you want to be? What would that do for you? What are you afraid of? What scares you? 
How can I connect with a fear? How do I, how can I let you know that that fear that you have of starting your business, connecting with your clients, investing in something that feels so big is something that I have felt too, because I have been there. I have been the business owner that has said, I don't know if I can invest in that right now. I don't know if I can hire someone right now. I am so scared. I know I need this to grow and I feel so scared. I know what that's like. And when we can connect with our buyers, with our clients, with our employees, with our vendors in that scary way, it allows the relationships to be even better than they ever have been before. Number nine stories. Oh, can I tell you about the power of stories? Now, let's be very clear. We do not tell sales stories for the sake of a story. We do not tell sales stories because we're trying to buy up time. Stories like questions should be something that are very well practiced, are something that we understand and we know what the point of the story is. The way we plan and prepare stories, whether this is stories that we will share on our website, whether this is stories that we share in an email, whether this is stories that we share in a proposal or with a client later on for testimonials and referrals, we focus on number one, what is the point of the story? The point of the story is that we want somebody to take an action or feel regret for not taking that action, right? When I tell you the story about Julie, who was so scared to go ahead and invest in her business. She was actually just starting. She was three months in and she already felt like her entire business was bleeding from her. I've, she spent so much money on logos and websites and business cards. And now she still was without a client. And she was watching Dragon's Den. And when Kevin O'Leary said, all you really have is a really expensive habit, something in her felt so heavy in her stomach. It was like a weight. Oh, it just sunk. And she's like, that's my business. All I have right now is a really expensive habit. And when she came to us and she said, I don't have the money right now. We said, that's okay, Julie, let's work with you. After four months, when she had her very first $20,000 contract, she says, I wish that was the first thing I invested in my business not the logo or the website or the business cards, getting the client. We use stories in similar ways. In your story, you're going to use a client or a prospect as a hero because it's not you. You are not the hero. You are the guide to help your hero cross the chasm to be on the other side on something so much greater. You are the Yoda and your client is the Jedi Knight. Your client is Luke Skywalker. The story is about Luke Skywalker, not about Yoda. We tell the story from the point of view of the client. We help them get there. At the end, they either have one of two things happen. They either regret not taking the action. Luke Skywalker never became the Jedi Knight, and he just became someone completely the same as everyone else. Or he learned how to become a master Jedi and he helped save the empire. And you could be the same way. A good salesperson knows how to talk. A great salesperson knows how to tell very specific sales stories. We want to help you get to that point where you are all great salespeople. You are great leaders of your company. You are great sales managers. You are great CEOs. You are great presidents. And you are helping your team, your eventual team, your now team, to become even greater than they ever were before. Number 10, help you to simplify the six slide proposal. So the six slide proposal is something that was created back when, uh, back when I was actually in corporate sales. And it is something that is so popular, even Zoom. Yes, Zoom that we are all currently using. Back in February, back before this whole COVID thing took off, Zoom asked me to come in and present to their entire base 
this six slide proposal. We had, I don't even know, we had like well over a thousand people on the webinar at the time, right? And now I think that they, they allow even more. I think at the time they could only cap out a thousand people and we capped it out with the number of people to learn specifically the six slide proposal. Your proposal, we want you to simplify this, make this as simple as possible and no simpler. What we want to do is number one, we want to focus you on your client's goals and aspirations. Number two, you're going to focus on the current state, the client's current states and the consequences of staying in that current state. Number three, where does your client want to be? So if we're thinking of that destination transportation um, aspect. We want to number one, understand where does your client want to be in five years, 10 years time. The current state is where they currently are and how much it will continue to suck by them never leaving from that position. And the ideal state will be what does Cancun Beach look like? Then we'll talk about your product or service rather not then talk about your product or service, specifically the bridge, the bridge that will help them get from here to there. Then the timeline, when do they want to be finished? And then the client investment with that return on investment. Number 11, faster sales through the referral network. What we want to do is we want to actually leverage this. Let's not try to make things more difficult than they have to be. Let's be honest here. Some of you are going to tell me, Kim, I'm already building my business. So the majority of my business has been built through referrals. Great. You're an expert at this already. But as you continue to build new clients and new clients, are you building this into your sales process? Are you building this into a, a, a next step, a next natural next step that is going to help you build even faster, faster, faster? You have an 89% chance of closing a deal if it starts from a referral. That's why some of you up to this point have felt like sales has been fairly easy or the business that you have had has been fairly easy because when it starts from a referral, especially for somebody that likes and trusts you, your, the, that trust has been transferred over. You've never really had to get through a sales process, but when something is starting brand new, net new, that is why it takes a lot more time. That is why it feels a lot more difficult. Get to the point where you are asking for referrals, both once the deal is closed and even before the deal is closed, which means that sometimes your deal might actually take several months to implement. But if the client has enjoyed this conversation up till this point, what this will allow you to do is actually say, listen, if you have enjoyed this conversation or you, you're excited about what the changes we're going to implement for you, who else do you know that could also use this benefit? When it comes to testimonials in the event, in the event that they don't know specifically anyone, then ask for a video testimonial. Have more videos on your website. Share these on social media. Give them the like bright, shining light. Say, this is the business. This is how amazing their business is. You must buy from them. And inside those video testimonials, be real with that client's fear and hesitation. I was really scared to invest. I knew it was a lot of money. I wasn't really sure what I was getting. And I was so glad. I was so incredibly happy I took that leap of faith. The only regret I have is that I wish I had done it sooner. I wish I hadn't taken so long to find them. We had one gentleman, um, Brad, who actually graduated two months ago. He says, Kim, the only regret I have is that I wish I would have found you when I was first building my business. He's like, where were you then? Because my business is night and day different than where it was before. I am way more clear with the clients I'm meeting. I'm meeting way more of my ideal clients. He's like, and I'm closing business. I never thought that that was me. He's like, I never thought I could, I was the person that could actually close deals for my company. And number 12, the key, the key behind any client investment is showing your customers how they will make more business and you will never, ever lose. It is not enough anymore to just to tell our clients that the reasons why they're going to invest with us is going to help them save money, save time, save energy. I do not want to save anything. I want to take anything that I have saved and reinvest it into something that is going to help me achieve more. If you save me time, it is not that I'm going to take that time and be like, wow, this is great. I have an extra hour. Huh. What am I going to do with it? 
No, if I end up having an hour in my calendar, I'm going to find something that's going to help me build my business, something that's going to take away things on my to-do list, something that's going to make me feel more productive. I am going to do something that is going to help me achieve more. If someone says, listen, we're going to help you save even more money. And let's say they save me $10,000. I'm not going to say, wow, that's a really good $10,000. I'm going to say, wow, that $10,000 is going to help me to, to reduce my debt, allowing me to be in a better financial position. I'm going to reinvest it into something that's going to help me make even more money. I am going to give myself a bonus as a business owner so that I know that the investments I've been making in my company, the blood, sweat, and tears is actually paying off. I feel better. I feel more. I feel greater than. It is your job to show your clients how any investment you make with them is going to turn into four times, 10 times, a hundred times more than the investment that they've already had. If someone invests $40,000 in sales training for our company, we had better do a really good job in showing how that $40,000 is going to turn into $160,000 or $400,000 into their bottom line. If we cannot show them that, then we have not done ourselves a service. Anyone who invests $5,000 in sales training should be able to see how that $5,000 is going to turn into $20,000, into $50,000, into $100,000, $250,000, a million dollars or more. And if we can't do that, I mean, number one, we wouldn't be in existence anymore, right? Our business would already be collapsed, but it's not. We're growing. And the reasons why we're growing is because every single person before you has achieved significant results. All right. So those are your 12 steps I want you to take involved in. I, if you're in, if you're ready, I want you to either, you can, we have different types of programs that will meet both your budget as well as your time commitments. You can choose between instructor or self-study. We have low, really low monthly payment plans and we have coaching support. So whether you are joining the self-study program or you are joining the, um, the instructor led program, we have a bi-weekly, um, every month, monthly coaching session, bi-weekly coaching sessions that you are more than welcome to join in. Check out the program at ko, um, kimmorleski.com slash ko dash online. But my gift to you, I promised you I was going to give you a gift. If you book a time with someone on our team, we're, I'm going to gift you with the free version of the Sell More Faster book. It is my best-selling book. It is, uh, it's the full e-version. We will actually have uh, the mailed version out to any of our students, but you'll learn the best sales method to help grow your business. Go to bit.ly slash KO meeting and book a time with myself, with Dale, with Mike. The moment you do, we're going to send you the free e-version of the book so that you can get started. And, and we're going to give you 20 minutes to help you determine how to take whatever action you wanted to focus on today and use it to grow your business. Work with us. We're happy to have that conversation on creating better emails, better phone calls, better sales strategies. Why do we do all of this? Because if LinkedIn calls me their most influential sales leader to follow, Zig Ziglar is my most influential sales leader to follow. And he's so valuable to me that this is actually, this is our number one value at KO Advantage Group. This quote, you can have everything you want in life if you help enough people get what they want. That's all. That's all we want to do. How do we help you get more? more of whatever you want. And if we do that, it will pay for itself time and time again. You are now all unofficial KO sales, you students. Congratulations. We end every single classroom with this question. What is one thing you are going to do differently today? I want you to write it in the chat, please. What is the one thing you are going to take action today on? In the chat, you are already writing, yes, I'm going to take action. Yes, I'm going to do something. Yes, I'm going to do. What is the one thing that you are choosing to do immediately after that call? Maybe that's to meet us. Maybe that's to connect with us. Maybe that is just to learn more about us. Maybe it's to start to actually start planning out the questions, writing out the questions that you're going to start to ask in your sales meetings. 
I have, I think I have one minute for questions here. If anyone has a quick question in the chat. Yeah, Robin's going to revise your proposal deck to six slides. Awesome. Mia, thank you so much. Um, Greg, you're absolutely uh, awesome. Thank you so much. Debbie wanted to let us know emotional intelligence is always a great thing. Heather's going to be finishing her MailChimp database. Awesome, Heather. Let's get you started as quickly as possible. Thank you all so much for, for choosing to be here today. I very much appreciate. I appreciate you and appreciate the time that you've spent today. I know that you had options when it came to giving up an hour of your time, and I am so grateful that you chose to spend it with me and my team and helping you build your business. I hope to see you all next week, same time, same, um, not same link, but the same time. You'll be getting an email uh, from us in a little bit to make sure that you're registering next week for nine fatal sales errors. Bye-bye for now.